substitution and elimination reactions with other substrates. What if my substrate is an alcohol, for instance? Well, if I treat it with sodium iodide, iodide is a strong nucleophile and a non-base. Strong nucleophile means SN2. So, I do nucleophilic attack and loss of a leaving group. Wait, loss of a leaving group can't happen because hydroxide is one of the world's worst leaving groups. So, using sodium iodide is not going to work on an alcohol. Does this mean I can't perform a reaction like this? No, but it means I have to do something to change that hydroxyl group into a good leaving group. What if instead of using sodium iodide, I used hydroiodic acid? Then my first step can be proton transfer to protonate the alcohol. I also get an iodide ion as a result of that first proton transfer step. Now, instead of a hydroxide, I've got a water, which is a good leaving group. So now I can do SN2 attack. So I get my SN2 product, the alkyl iodide with inversion of configuration, and I also get water. That's my leaving group. Not always practical to do this in acidic conditions, however. Sometimes you need to do it in basic conditions. In that case, rather than treating your alcohol with a halo acid, you treat your alcohol with an alkyl sulfonate. And then you change the OH into a sulfonate, which is a good leaving group. Mesolate, tosylate, and triflate are sulfonates. And these make amazing leaving groups. Each one is the conjugate base of a strong acid. Each one is stabilized by resonance and induction. These are the conjugate acids, by the way. The conjugate acid of mesolate is methane sulfonic acid. The conjugate acid of tosylate is paratoluene sulfonic acid, and the conjugate acid of triflate is trifluoromethane sulfonic acid with a pKa of negative 14, a super acid. So, the conjugate bases of these are super, super weak bases and therefore excellent leaving groups. To make a tosylate, for instance, I treat my alcohol with tosyl chloride in pyridine as the solvent. And voila, I now have my alkyl tosylate. Mechanistically, what's going on? So the TSCl actually stands for tosyl chloride. The alcohol oxygen does SN2 attack on the sulfur, and the chloride leaves. Now I have a protonated alkyl tosylate with an oxonium ion. This is where the pyridine comes in. Pyridine is a good solvent. Also happens to be a base, which is happy to deprotonate that oxonium. Deprotonating the oxonium gives us this, our tosylate. I'm putting the OTS is shorthand for that whole thing. So our alkyl tosylate, anything that we can do with an alkyl chloride or an alkyl halide, we can do with an alkyl tosylate. You can treat an alkyl tosylate just like an alkyl halide. A primary alkyl tosylate 
treated with sodium hydroxide goes SN2, takes us back to a primary alcohol. A secondary alkyl tosylate treat it with sodium hydroxide and we'll get some E2 product and some SN2 product. And if this were a wedge, then the alcohol form would be on a dash. Here's a practice question for you. If I take this secondary alcohol and first treat it with tosyl chloride and pyridine, and second with tert butoxide in T butanol, what will my outcome be? Remember, first consider the reagents, then the substrate, figure out the mechanism, and then you get the outcome. Pause your video, work the problem, resume to see the answer. So, in my first step, the tosyl chloride and pyridine treating the alcohol just changes the OH to an OTS. So now what have I got? A secondary tosylate. The tosylate is a good leaving group and I'm treating it with potassium tert butoxide. Here is my tert butoxide ion. The reason we do this in t-butanol, well t-butanol is the conjugate acid of tert butoxide. This means that any proton transfer that happens between the base and the solvent will not have any effect. In any case, tert butoxide is a strong base, so it's going to give us E2, and it's bulky, so we're looking at the Hoffman product. In other words, it's going to take one of the less substituted beta protons. So we get proton transfer. This curved arrow forms the pi bond, which exceeds the octet on the alpha carbon. And we get loss of a leaving group. Our product, therefore, is the Hoffman alkene, the less substituted alkene. We might also get a very small amount of Zaitsev product. Is this the answer you got?